I do notice in some of the comments uh, people saying, oh, but we thought you didn't like Chinese machines. I don't like about 95% of Chinese machines. All of the machines in my shop are pretty well from China. So you've got to know which are the good ones. Who's reliable? And over the last 40 years or more, I've learnt. Now this is a 100 watt tube. As I, some of you will notice there's a bit, bit of paper in there. Well, it's there for a good reason. If you look into the centre of the tube, you will see that there is a pinkish colour. This is the signs of an, a top grade laser tube. That pinkness inside the laser tube is a flashing of gold. That gold is a catalyst which, shall we say, preserves the life of the laser. Because when a laser is made and it, people start to use it, it has a lifespan. The lifespan of this particular laser is 10,000 hours. While we're on the subject of laser tubes themselves, um, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there have come to the realization that when you buy uh, a machine from eBay or anywhere else and you have it delivered, you replace that tube in six months or less. Now, when you buy a machine, um, unfortunately, should we say it's 95% of the machines sold on eBay, um, they're oversold. And what I mean by that is they might be advertised as a, a 60 or an 80 watt laser. If you notice the peak output says 119 on this, you can't run this labor laser tube at 119 watts because you will kill the tube because what you are doing is what they call overdriving the tube um, and a lot of the manufacturers as I was just saying they sell their machines on the peak output of the tube so if you buy a machine with a 60 watt tube in uh, it may when it was new produce 60 watts peak output but in fact it's an actual you know it's a 45 or 46 watt tube so a lot of the guys they start using their laser machine and they run it at a 100% output and they're killing their tube that's why it doesn't last even six months and the reason for that is the gas there's, there's many different gases inside here they call it a co2 uh, gas uh, laser but in fact there's uh, other gases in there and what happens is that if you operate at a high operate at a very very high output higher than its maximum normal output uh, what happens with the co2 gas is it breaks down into uh, its separate elements carbon and oxygen and it doesn't recombine now that is what the gold catalyst is for inside the center of this tube that catalyst helps the oxygen 
and carbon recombine to CO2 to prolong the life of the tube. Do you remember me saying to you just now that prior to this machine being shipped out, uh, when it was completed, it was fully tested by Thunder Laser engineers. And they have left what's known in the scientific world as an engineering test telltale, which is it's actually a piece of uh, acrylic plastic and that is the shape of the beam before it has gone through the lens at the front that's the Gaussian shape of the beam if you notice it's a cone shape so most of the energy of a laser beam is in the center part of the beam that is why it has gone down deep sharp there and then comes out to a cone effect because la the laser light is like I say most of the energy is in the very center of the beam as that proves okay so it gets less on the way out that is why it's given a cone uh, tunnel in then effect uh, incidentally, this was done here at the end of the laser. A laser beam is not hair thin when it comes out of the end of the, the laser tube. It's approximately 8 to 10 millimeters. In this case, I can tell you it's about it's about 10 millimeters, the whole beam. But the energy is more concentrated to the center of the beam. I'm going to go into that in more detail as we go forward with videos. So that's that's a very nice touch of proof of testing. So I brought you in for a close look at this. Now it's been Badged as Thunder Laser. Thunder Laser is a very big company. So they have laser tube manufacturers make lasers specifically for them. And they must meet a very, very high criteria. So each laser tube is tested. This is a class 4 laser. It's stating here that it is it is a 100 watt tube. In other words, you can actually run it at 100 watts. Okay, so this is the end of the laser where the water, uh, water outlet is. Uh, not only does it cool the inside core of the laser, but it also cools the outward lens then of the laser. Now, this is a very, very special beam directional system. This unit here, this is a beam combiner. So the little red dot laser fires into this like two-way mirror, which then follows the actual laser beam. So it combines laser beams. Now this is a red dot laser that you can see and of course the beam that comes out of the laser you can't see at all. It's uh, outside of our light spectrum that we see. Now here's something I want to point out. Wherever cables run through bodywork there is grommets, there's heavy duty cabling connectors and each individual door panel is earthed. These are several things that make this laser meet European and American and Australian standards of electrical machinery. 
So I just want to show you before I go any further inside the electrical cabinet. That is a thing of beauty. Everything, every wire is labelled, every wire is perfectly laid, it's all in conduit, every, every panel is double earthed, it's beautiful. You would have to go a long, long way to find wiring at this level. Look at these solenoid switches. To switch on and off the air blower and all different things and even to the, the, the blower to the air nozzle high and low pressure this is an industrial laser that meets all compliance of Euro American and Australian it has even has a computerized smart board so you can change the, the time delays of the extraction system so it will come on before you start cutting and when you finish cutting it will continue blowing for another 10 15 seconds a minute whatever you set it to you can program it to set it to, to come on and off at your particular needs it's absolutely beautiful this type of wiring this is what makes it an industrial laser for the world market and another thing too you'll notice these bolts here and you'll notice this line you can unbolt this bottom skirt, turn this up on end and put it through a standard doorway. That's another neat trick. That's a NEMA 23. Hybrid servo drive. If you notice the extension on the back Inside that extension there, there's a module that senses the angle of the rotor. And it feeds, it feeds information back to the driver. So the driver and the, the stepper motor talk to each other like the, 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 the driver was sent a command to turn so many degrees. The motor turns so many degrees and sends a message back to the driver saying well okay I've turned that much what's the next command? And the idea of that is if for example you are running too fast and the hybrid stepper motor loses time then or loses steps it'll send a message back to the driver saying oh hold on I'm not, I'm not quite caught up and the driver if necessary will send a command to the control unit saying stop the program there's a problem and using these type of hybrid servo drives enables this laser to operate at a thousand millimeters a second that's very very fast it's an industrial laser and while we're talking about hybrid servo drives this is a, a very very modern laser unit the gantry is very very thick extruded aluminium and very straight very precise not only that the hardened steel rails which is normally called linear rails is incorporated 
into this aluminium extrusion. So it's lighter and stronger and more durable and it's virtually kept dry. I tend to use a Teflon based lubricant, dry lubricant on this and uh, never any trouble. All the Thunder Lasers equipment is in the top 1% of quality coming out of China. Otherwise, I wouldn't have got one. It is the best bang for your buck. It really, really is. Now, I'll tell you another thing that drove me to Thunder. And that is, Thunder Laser, rather than make what they think you want, they took advice from Western engineers and Western marketing, and they all came together to produce equipment that is top spec for the Western market and that's exactly what they've done not only that they have a, a dealer in England a couple of dealers in America Germany France all over Europe actually Australia and you could pick the phone up and talk to a laser salesperson you can even speak to an engineer if you want that will talk to you in your language because they are is they have Americans running the American dealership they have English people running the English dealership an Australian running the Australian dealership and there's also an old saying, and that is, you get what you pay for. And it is absolutely true with lasers. 